Hey everyone, my name is Katie and I am starting my fifth year of teaching and I will be teaching third grade this year. I'm so excited and I'm really pumped that you guys are here for today's video because today I'm going to kind of go over how I started planning for the first week of school, things that I definitely recommend doing, some of the strategies that I use to just start making a plan and then some of the activities that I'm going to be using with my students. So let's get started. All right, before we jump into the plan portion of the video, I wanted to start off with just a little update on like where we are in the school year for you guys, especially because I know a lot of you guys started watching my videos during my classroom setup series, and this is the first one I've posted since all my classroom setup series videos. So I just thought I'd give you a little update. I am currently sitting at home in my office in my comfy clothes because yesterday, was meet the teacher day and it was a whirlwind. It was great. I got to meet all my students and their parents and I'm so excited. I think I'm just gonna have a really sweet class and it's gonna be a new year and a new grade, but I was really tired when we were done. It was like an hour and a half of meet, welcome, paperwork, getting to know students, getting to know parents, families, all of these things. Uh, so when I came home last night, I just chilled and did like absolutely nothing. <laughs> and I'm also coming up on, like when I'm filming this video today, my final classroom setup video was posted today. And I was sitting there realizing I don't have any other videos created, which is interesting because this summer I've been so far ahead on creating content for y'all. Um, and I just didn't have anything else posted, but I have been working on my plans. So school will start for me right now, next week, I have two more planning days and then we start on a Wednesday. By the time you're seeing this, we will have already started, but I just thought this would be a great video to share because I know a lot of you guys will not have started school by the time this goes live and we'll give you some good ideas or these are just things you could do in the month of August with your class anyway. So even if you have started school already, you can just kind of see how I plan it out. So we're gonna go ahead and jump in. Okay, so I've broken the like first week of school planning process down into three steps. And the first step that I did was plan out all of my procedures. Now, as I'm talking about some of these things, I will show you some clips on my computer too of some of the resources I use, what my slides look like, stuff like that, so you can follow along. So the first thing I recommend doing is planning out every single procedure you want to use in your room because I copy and paste a lot of those procedures straight into my first week lesson plans, but that really gets me thinking like, how do I want students to line up? How do I want them to do this? How do I want them to do that? That way when I'm writing my first week plan, I can say, okay, we got to the point in our day where we're gonna line up for the first time. Here's everything I need to teach them when that happens. So one cool resource that I used was a procedure checklist from That Kinder Mama. Okay, this product is actually amazing. So what she did was she took her whole day and she kind of broke it down into chunks of the day and thought of all of the procedures that she would need to teach her students. Now hers was edited for her kindergartners. So what I did was I took the product and then I just edited it to fit my needs for third grade. So everything from morning routine, I've got all of the steps that I thought through that I want my students to do. Take their folder out of their backpack and put it in their bin. Use the strap on top of the backpack to hang it on the hook one backpack on each hook, I think. I'm still thinking through that one. <laughs> Put lunchbox away or make lunch choice, model how to make lunch choice, and then begin morning bins at table. Then I have morning bin procedures, like once you finish unpacking, you can choose a bin, stay in one spot, limit of three friends, you must choose a different bin than you used the previous day, etc. So you can see kind of the list, morning meeting, routine, um, bathroom procedures, callback procedures, lining up procedures, anything I wasn't sure about. Also, I put in red because some of these things are school specific and if I wasn't sure and I hadn't asked a coworker exactly how they do it, I just put it in bold and in red so I could remember to go back and fill those procedures in. So I will link this product for sure. You guys need to go get this. It is a great checklist. It's super cute. I mean, hello, all the colors and the fonts, I love it. But this was the first step that I did in my plans. So if you're not sure where to begin, procedures are definitely the first place. All right, moving on to step two. Step two is where I actually started to plan out my day. Now, I will like preface this with, in order for me to start step two, I had to have my class schedule because I started using timestamps. 
So you might be wondering, you might not have your class schedule yet. And that was my predicament for a while. And that's why I started with routines and procedures. Cause I was like, no matter what the schedule is, this is how I want kids to go to the bathroom. So that's why that was step one. And then once I got my schedule, I was able to go to step two. If you don't have your class schedule yet, you can still kind of start to do this and plan out just activities and maybe not like put them into time slots yet. Just start brainstorming some activities that you'd want to do. And then as soon as you get your schedule, you can put it in time slots like I'm about to show you. So here is what my planning table kind of looks like. I made a table with a heading for the day and then I put three columns. The first column obviously is the timestamps. You can see that right here. The second column is all of the activities we'll be doing within that time frame. And then the third column is just an extra list for my own sanity that highlights any of the routines or procedures that I will be teaching during that time. That way I can kind of just do a quick check to make sure I'm introducing the routines and procedures that I need to be introducing during those first couple of days. So you can see at the beginning, I'm starting my day with a morning activity where we're gonna, and we're gonna unpack supplies, which I'm actually not doing on the first day anymore, so I'll erase that. Um, and then I have a list of the activities, class family word search, and then a baseball card page because we're doing like a baseball theme. So it's like an all about me paper that's baseball themed. That's what that is. And during that time, the procedure that we'll be teaching is hanging backpacks. We're kind of teaching morning routine too, but since it's the first day, they don't do their like regular morning routine. Um, and so I can like cross out the supplies thing too because I've already decided that I don't need to do that on the first day. We kind of did it at Meet the Teacher. So you can see that it's gonna be fluid and you're gonna cross things out and add things and that's okay. Um, you can see that I continue to keep going with the time block. So here's what our morning meeting is going to take care of. Here are the procedures I'm teaching, choosing a spot for morning meeting and our classroom doorbell call and response. Um, and I've got some activities in here, like we're going to do a find a friend menu board. We're going to go over our meet the teacher slide. Then I'm going to start to introduce class commitments. And I did bullet by bullet exactly what I want my students to do. Like we're going to talk about how my job is to keep students safe and students have to help keep it safe at school. So we're going to break into some groups and talk about what does safety look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? And let them make posters. And then we'll come together and make our class commitments based on the things that they said. Continuing on, I have where I'm going to introduce my classroom helper. And then I've got some real labs that we're going to do. I've got our special area snack. So you can see I just went through the whole day and plugged in activities that I wanted to put in each block and then put the procedure on the other side that matches. I did post a question poll over on my Instagram to kind of see what kind of questions you guys had about planning for the first week. And one of them was, what's a good idea of an activity to do when they come in? I would recommend a packet of some kind that requires coloring. I'm doing a class family word search. So I'm gonna take all their names and put it in a word search so they can look for each other's names. Great way for them to stay busy and get to know their classmates. I'm also doing that baseball card activity. I'm also putting a coloring page in there. So I'm gonna have three things so that as they trickle in on the first day, they'll have something to work on, but it's also there for extra, like later in the day, if we finish an activity early, we can go back to that packet and do some more like quiet work time or like talk with your partner, talk to the people at your table and work time on that packet. So for the first day, definitely some kind of packet. There are tons of freebies that you can find, word searches, coloring pages, crossword puzzles, um, mazes, you name it. Like there's tons of stuff that you can find. So kind of busy work, but on the first day, that's kind of a must because you're gonna be helping students come in, helping them adjust and get situated. So you really need something they can do independently. And especially if you're in those primary grades, like coloring, let them color. That's something they can do on their own, something they can do on their own. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna bring us to step three. And step three was taking my plans and turning them into slides. I don't know if you teach with slides, but if you don't, you should look into it, consider it because slides help me organize my brain and like help me stay on track and with my lesson plans the whole day. And it also provides great visuals for the kiddos. So what I'm going to do next is show you my slides. And as I'm going through my slides, I'll probably give you some more specifics on some of these activities. So if you're looking for activity ideas, this is the time to get your pencil out, get ready to take notes because I'm going to walk you through all the activities that we are doing. Okay, so this is what my classroom slides look like. The template is absolutely adorable. I got it from Teachers Pay Teachers, so I will link the product in the description box. Matches my theme, love it. So I just used the welcome slide. I put reminders just like welcome, it's the first day. 
the date to do, hang your backpack, find your desk, and begin the work that's placed on your desk. And then I do have like a little schedule overview. So if students are anxious or worried, they can look up at the board and kind of see a general schedule of what we're going to be doing that day. Now, going through the first day, the first thing we're going to do is our morning meeting. I included these two pictures as a visual reminder for myself that these are the two things I'm going to be teaching my students first thing in morning meeting. We're going to go over the doorbell sound because that's what I'm going to use to signal that our morning routine is over and it's time for them to come find a spot for morning meeting. And I'm also going to teach them how to do the pretzel breath. So pretzel breath, if you haven't heard about it, put your hands in front, you bring it in. You're supposed to put your tongue on the roof of your mouth and you breathe in. And back out. So that's the first breath that I'm going to teach my students to do. So when we use the classroom doorbell, I'll ring the doorbell and then all of students have to find me with their eyes and then we'll all breathe together and then I'll give them the direction. So after that for our morning meeting, I'm going to go over these important procedures like teaching them hand signals, the signal for using the restroom, the signal if they need a tissue, um, if they need a pencil, if they agree with somebody, they do the me too hand sign. And then I'm also going to introduce how I call my kids by table because most of the time I'll say pink table, go ahead and come find a spot to sit or say at your desk or I'll say green table, please clean up and I call them by table. So I'm going to introduce that as well. After that, you can see right here, I put like an actual visual of the worksheet that we're going to be using for our morning meeting. So we're going to do a find a friend who, so I'll pass this out for them and let them walk around and find a friend who likes football, find a friend who doesn't like sports very much, find a friend who's wearing new shoes, etc. So I put the actual physical picture, I just take a picture of my phone and then import it to the slide to keep myself on track. So I can look at it and say, okay, this is what we're doing next and students have a visual as well. So that takes us to the meet the teacher slides. Um, and for the sake of privacy, I'm going to skip over those, but we do meet the teacher slides and tell them all about me. Okay, after we do meet the teacher slides, we're going to go our, to our class family. Um, so for our class family, I just put the little blurb that I want to share about how my job is to keep them safe and they help us stay safe. And then here are the three questions that we're going to be doing on posters. So I'll split them into three groups and have them one group brainstorm what does safety look like in our room, what does safety sound like in our room, and what does safety feel like in our room. Um, after that, we're going to make a list of commitments, and at the top of the chart, I'll write, I am willing to blank. And we'll review what everybody came up with on their poster, and I'll say, okay, based on these things, what are you willing to do as a class family to try to make our classroom look, feel, and sound safe? So, for example, I am willing to be kind to my friends. I am willing to share. I am willing to work together. I am willing to use my walking feet, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and afterwards, we have our school rules, which I've taken my school name out. But you can see right here, our school rules are be safe, be kind, be responsible. So we're going to use those colors and go look at the class commitments that we just wrote. And anything that reflects our school rules, we're going to highlight. So I'll look and say, okay, which one of these do you think go with be safe? And I'll put a star next to it. Which one of these commitments that you guys came up with follows our rule of be kind? Which one shows that you're being responsible? Which it should be like most of them apply for all of them. Um, and then we're going to move on to introducing our class helper. This year I'm doing one class helper. Class jobs just overwhelm me. And um, yeah, I've done class jobs one year and then I did classroom helper all the years before. So we're going back to class helper. And our class helper is going to be called our Alexa. So I have the verbiage that I want to use to introduce our class helper for the day. Then we're going into our first activity. We're using the book, Our Class is a Family. And I have a turn and talk question that we're going to use at the beginning. And then we're going to do this activity. Again, I put the physical picture of the worksheet on the slide. We're going to be using this activity that is called, that's got the little puzzle piece. A class family is blank. Our classroom is a family because blank and they get to fill in their little piece of the puzzle and draw our class family, something that represents our class family. I think then we go to specials and when we come back, we're going to finish the second half of the activity and read the story The Relatives Came. So this one's a story about an actual family and then we're going to do a compare and contrast together and I'll just write on the slide and talk about how was the class family similar to the relatives and how was it different from like the relatives or the actual family and i'm going to use that as an opportunity to introduce our friends and family board so i have a picture of the physical space in our room on my slide and i'll introduce that and teach them about how they can bring in pictures and i'll show them my picture introduce everybody in my family and then encourage them to bring in a picture and if any students have already brought one in because i did send a note home for meet the teacher I'll let them introduce their family members and put it on the 
document camera for everybody too. And we just put that up in our room to have like a little safe space where people can see their family and their friends. Um, and just remember that they're part of our class family as well. And then our mascot is a fox. So we're gonna do a directed drawing of a fox. And I have all the steps in here, as you can see, which is so nice. Um, and then I'm gonna let them decorate it however they want to personalize it. And I'm hoping to put this up on our wow work board to be like our little class fox family. All right, after that, I have this fun little survey that I found for free online. If I can find the link, I will link it for you. Um, it was just a how I like to learn survey. So this gives me a good opportunity after we've had like some coloring time and some downtime for them to chit chat. Um, just a quick activity, like how do you like to learn? Do you work best when it's quiet? Do you like to work when there's noise in the room? Do you like to work at a table or at a desk? Do you like to sit on the floor? Do you work until the assignment is complete or do you um, have like the ability to come back and finish it later? So I think I'm gonna read it and then the students are just gonna circle yes or no. And this will just give me a little bit of a glimpse into their learning style. And it'll also help me know if like Johnny gets stressed when there's noise in the room, then like we can talk about that as a class family. If he's struggling with work one day, we can say, hey, I remember when we did those surveys at the beginning of the year that Johnny told me he works better when it's quiet. So let's work really hard to be a class family for him and help him do his best by staying quiet. So I feel like it um, definitely promotes understanding across the students too, if you use it that way. Then we're gonna do STEM bins. So this is a whole nother deal. All right, so STEM bins are what I'm planning to do. If you've seen any of my classroom setup videos, you've heard about them a ton. It's what I'm planning to use for my morning work. However, we're not doing that on the first day because it takes practice. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do is on the first day, what better way to fill in some of that first day time than introducing the stem bins and letting them explore them. So what we're gonna do is go over the procedures and I have those right here, okay? Those are my procedures for the stem bins. Then what I'm gonna do is let the students choose a stem bin that they'd like to explore. Now I'm not gonna have all the options out and in my lesson plan, I have specified exactly which ones I'm going to let students choose for the first couple weeks and then I'll add and swap out some as the year goes on but this will give them some time to chat, a good brain break for them, but also for me to like explicitly teach the procedures. I'm gonna take every stem bin and show them what's inside, show them what to do with it, and then let them choose. Um, and then that way I'm planning to start them like the very next morning. And again, we'll see how this goes. They're third graders, so they should be pretty independent, but I feel like if I take that time and I'll have time that first day to really introduce it, the power just went out, cool. <laughs> to really introduce it and then to go over the expectations that we'll be ready to start the next morning so I won't have to keep up coming up with morning work and we'll be able to jump right into it. So I have a dedicated time for that. And then our last activity of the day, our last big activity is called M&Ms and 7-Up. So what I'm gonna do is get some M&Ms in a bag and I'm gonna give students a scoop and they are allowed to use the scoop, they can fill it or they don't have to. And they're gonna scoop out some M&Ms. It's their choice if they wanna scoop the whole scoop or just some. But after they've done that, I'm also gonna give them a mini 7-Up. And the 7-Up stands for, I found this online, it's really cute. The 7-Up stands for 7-Up sentences. So sentences with seven words. And then for each M&M that they draw, they're gonna write a sentence about themselves with seven words. So instead of just saying, I like soccer, they would say, I play on a cool soccer team, seven words, and they write the sentence. And then after that, they can eat the M&M. So it's just a fun snack. We're doing it at the very end of the day. And then I'm gonna use these seven up sentences later in the week. So that's kind of the, the gist of that activity there. Then I've got our morning routine that we're going to review. So that way in the morning, they kind of have it refreshed and they remember what they're supposed to do. Then our pack up and dismissal routine. And again, I copied and pasted this right from that document I showed you in step one. And then that's it for the first day. All right, so looking at the second day, very similar slide. Again, I just gave an outline of the schedule so they could kind of see the gist of what we're doing. Very similar to the first day, morning meeting. We're gonna review the pretzel breath, get ourselves and our brains and bodies focused and ready for the day. And then we're gonna do a little bit of guess who. I'll let them turn and talk as a little connection activity. We'll do a little guess who, which I'm just gonna pick some random seven up sentences from the day before and I'm gonna read them and they're gonna to try to figure out which classmate wrote that seven up sentence. So that's a fun way to get to know each other. Then I'm gonna introduce our safekeeper box, which this is a conscious discipline routine. 
Um, and it's a way that my students will make their commitments every day. So I'll have the commitment poster we made from the first day and I'll remind them of their commitments. We'll go back over them and then I'll let them know that we're going to make those commitments every single day. We're gonna look over them and every day we'll say, I am committing to do these things. I'm willing to do these things because we want our school to be safe every day. So the way that they're gonna do that is with these emoji erasers that I got from my Amazon wish list. So every day when they come into the classroom, there's gonna be a bucket of emoji erasers on the counter close to like where they're gonna hang their backpacks and they get to pick one out and just set it on their name tag for the morning, like for our morning bins. And then when we start our morning meeting, everybody's gonna place their emoji into the sparkling box, which is our safe keeper box. And that just says, I am committing to keep my classmates safe today. And I hang on to the box because my commitment is to keep all of them safe. And I'll set it somewhere in our room. And we'll just do that every day as a quick little reminder, like I am making a commitment today to keep my classmates safe. Now the emojis are fun because they have little faces on them. So I'm gonna let them know they can just choose their favorite one. Like if somebody wants to choose the one with like the hard eyes every single time, great, that's fine. Or they can look in there and use it as a chance to like reflect and pick one that matches how they're feeling. So if they're feeling kind of nervous, they could pick the one that's feeling kind of nervous. If they're feeling silly, they can pick the one that's feeling silly. And so they could use that as a little like feelings check-in in the morning too. All right, the next part of our day is where I'm going to introduce our class dojo system. And y'all, less than a week till school starts and I'm still working this out in my brain, how I'm gonna do this. So stay tuned because I'll let you know how we're gonna use class dojo. But right now it just says TBD, but the slide is there so I don't forget to go back and do it. After that, we're going to use the What Should Danny Do School Day book and talk about the power to choose. So we're gonna go over our like class dojo things and then like reflect on Danny's day at school. If you've never read these books, they're really fun because the kids get to make a choice that determines how the story goes. So I'm hoping we'll have enough time to read it twice so they can see how choosing different things makes the day go differently. And there's a cool little activity book that I've linked right here and I will link it below for you guys as well. And it just has an activity and a reflection page for each ending. So it might say like story ending one, here's like a, some questions about the story ending. So whatever story ending we end up doing, I will just pop that up on the board and ask them the questions. So after that, we've got a little chance for a movement break. So we're gonna play super duper rock, paper, scissors, which is just like tournament style. They all stand up. If you lose, you sit down and you cheer for your friends. And then at the end, it's like the final two. And then I also have Ready, Set, Math, which is a fun game I learned at a Conscious Discipline conference training. And it's like rock, paper, scissors, but you say ready, set, math, and then you hold out a number and they have to do the sum of the number in their head. So if this was like the other player, they'd be like ready, set, math, and then they'd say four. And you can do it with two hands too. So both students can go ready, set, math, and I have 10 and whatever they have, I just do the sum quickly in my head. So it's actually like um, number sense and fact fluency and like subitizing in your brain, like being able to see, oh, I have three and they have a two over here. That makes a five, one more is six or something like that. It's kind of fun. Um, then after that, we're doing a mystery science video. I've never done these, but one of my coworkers recommended it. So we're gonna listen to Mystery Doug explain how pencils are made. And then I have this fun activity we're gonna do where we like design pencils and I haven't made that yet either. So that's on my weekend list to do, yay. Um, after that, we've got another read aloud. We're gonna do the book Caramba, which is a really great growth mindset book. It's pretty silly too. And then we're gonna come up with some goals for third grade. Obviously there's three goals and then things they can do to reach their goals. So if they wanna get better at soccer, what can you do to get better at soccer? I really like this handout because it gives them like action steps, not just like, I wanna be a good reader. Like, okay, great, how, how are you gonna do that? <laughs> Um, and then I'm gonna make, and I haven't made this yet either, a procedure Kahoot. Kahoot is a fun online game you can use to review. However, my students will not have their Chromebooks yet, and so we will just like show our answer on the whiteboard. So it may not be as timed as normal Kahoot is. I'm still figuring that out. We'll end our day with a little bit of bingo, and then again, review our morning routine and review our pack up routine. All right, finally, that takes us to the last day of the week where you are gonna go on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So this is the third day of third grade. So fun, so we're gonna do a lot of things with the number three, obviously. Um, morning meeting, same thing we're gonna review. We have turn and talk questions. We're gonna read some seven up sentences and get to know our classmates. We're gonna review the class dojo things, again, TBD, but we're gonna go over it again. Um, then we're gonna do some math activities with the number three. So I have just a worksheet where it's adding three numbers together. This will give me a good view into some of my students' number sense and math fluency. Um, 
just I'm gonna walk around. I might let them do it. I'll probably have them do it by themselves at their desk and just like let them chat quietly for a little bit. But I also have a game. So I actually what I'll probably do is introduce the worksheet and just show them the worksheet because that should be pretty self-explanatory to them. And then I'll introduce the game, which is what this represents over here. Basically, each student has three dice. I don't know if I have enough dice for that. I should. I'm gonna have to go look. Maybe they share three dice, but they each roll them separately and they get three numbers. And then on their whiteboard, they use those three numbers to write a three digit number. So if they got like a three, two and a four, they could write 324. Um, but the goal is to write the biggest number. So they'd want to write like 432. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, three, two and four. So they, and then they reveal it to their partner and whoever had the biggest number gets to add a tally to their board, they get a point. And then they can flip it and play it with the smallest number if they want. So after they finish their worksheet, they'll be able to partner up and play our math with threes, with three dice. Um, Y'all, that's all I have. Okay, I'm just realizing that's as far as I got on my slides. So what I'm gonna have to do is pull up my plans and I'll keep going. Clearly, I still have a little bit of planning to do, but I'll keep going and show you like what I have planned for the rest of the third day. All right, I've got the plans pulled up. So we were right here, math, three digit numbers, rolling with three dice. After that, I have a YouTube video where they're just gonna do um, like things in threes. It gives them three choices, they have to pick one and then they do the exercise. It's just like one of those brain breaks with three options, so. Then we've got special area, snap and read aloud. Um, then I have some third grade task cards, which I will insert the picture of that into my slides once I finish my slides up. I'll link those below if you're looking for them. They're just questions that I'm gonna post around the room. They get to walk around with their clipboard and answer them. That's what a task card is. Um, yeah, that'd be really fun. Then I have the true story of the three little pigs. So we'll review the three little pigs and then we'll listen to the true story because I don't have the book, but we'll just listen to it on YouTube. We'll do a little compare and contrast on the board and then the class will get to vote. Well, I have a flip book to show the three perspectives in the story to do like a little sketch for point of view. Then we'll do a class vote and do some daily data and ask them if they agree with the pigs or if they agree with the wolf. Then I have a third, third day writing activity. So writing things in three. So three things I did this summer, three things I want my teacher to know about me, three of my favorite things. Like three, if I just say your favorite food, your three favorite foods or your three favorite animals. Stuff like that. Lunch, lunch, recess. And then when we come back from recess, I'm gonna introduce their planners that they're gonna be using for all of third grade. We'll kind of set them up together, make sure names are written in them, and then we're gonna write our spelling words for the next week, because I'm planning to do that on Fridays for the next week, so they're ready to go. And then y'all, it's gonna be the end of the first week of school. I can't believe it. So that's a lot. That's a lot of planning that goes into the first couple weeks. Now after this, we'll kind of jump into curriculum and hopefully planning will become a little more streamlined because I'll be using math curriculum, science curriculum, social studies curriculum, and then we'll start to have some patterns and some consistency from week to week. Um, but you know, the first days it's like, come up with whatever you can. And so that's what I did for the first couple days of school. So I hope that helps give you some ideas on some things that you can do for the first day of school. I'd love for you guys to comment below what's your favorite first day of school activity or read aloud or anything like that. Let's make the comment section like a huge wealth of knowledge of things that you can do. So if there's ever a first year teacher who comes across this video and is panicked, they can scroll through the comments and see like thousands of suggestions. That would be so cool. Um, <laughs> but I hope it all goes well. I did wanna end the video with a little update for you guys as well. I usually post a video every single Saturday and this is just like a fair warning that for the next month of my life, I am going to be in full back to school mode and <laughs> honestly, my priority is my class and my students and my family and my own personal sanity slash mental health. So I am not sure how much content creating for YouTube I'm going to be doing. Um, like I said, I'm not as far ahead as I usually like to be with videos. So there may be a point where I kind of an absent for a week or I don't share something, um, just know that I'm getting into the groove of my new school, my new grade, and all of those things. And it's nothing personal. It's just busy. Teaching is so, so busy. And I've said this before that like vlogging and sharing things is not necessarily hard, but it is time consuming. Um, so I just wanted to throw that little disclaimer out there that if you don't see me for a while, it's okay. But if you want to keep up to date, like more frequently, definitely follow my Instagram because I'll be able to like share quick blurbs on there. But as far as like sitting down to film a, film a video or like vlogging, that might not happen until I feel like I've got my feet under me and like the school year up and running, if that makes sense, because it's just a little less 
um, to do on my to-do list that's already going to be super huge and long. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will be posting videos. I just can't guarantee you when. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, but I would love to have you subscribe and follow along for my teaching journey and for some teaching ideas. And I love learning from y'all too. You guys are awesome. And as always, I will see you in the next video.